Hello everybody, Steve Plitty, NG Events Media, James Kratz, Keith Sarge, and outside the Hell Center, another sort of surreal day in the long history of surreal days with Rutgers football. A new yeah. interim head coach, Nunzio Campanile, talked to us today. Pat Hobbs addressed why he replaced uh, Chris Ash. Let's just start with the new guy, Cratch. I mean, you know, it's just amazing to me. He was he was game planning for Hackensack High two years ago. Now he's yes. running a Big Ten program. Made a very, very favorable impression, though. I mean, you know, he, he had a lot of good things to say, I think. And I think maybe that little bit of youth polish is part of the reason why they gave him this job. No, I thought he would do well with the first press conference because he's been doing this for a while. Well, you know, I mean, I know it's not the same level, but I did it for eight years. He knows how to be kind of that stand-up, front-facing head coach program face. Uh, you know, I would tell you that I've worked my entire life uh, to prepare myself for this opportunity, and you know, to me, this is like the holy grail. So, of course, but you know, I understand that you know that there's a lot more that goes into that. That's way over my head, and you know, I'm just going to go do my job the, the best I can. I was going to ask that too because you're, you know, coach's son, coaching family. Um, I'm sure it was not the perfect, ideal circumstance that you'd want to run a college football program, but. You know, how ready are you for this? I mean, you've been doing this for your whole life. Just talk to me a little bit about you know, just how, how ready you are and prepared you are for to be a college football coach. Well, I guess we'll find out in the next eight weeks. But, uh, you know, the truth is, you know, I, I think that football is football, and I have literally spent my entire life on a football field. I mean, I, you know, I've been on a football team since I'm five years old. You know, so, uh, you know, my dad was a coach. All my brothers are coaches. You know, basically every – positive male influence in my life was a coach of some way, shape, or form. So, um, you know, I, I think that I'm, you know, prepared to help these guys going forward. But, you know, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, you know, just keeping them focused on the task at hand. I'm not really worried about the future. I'm just worried about, you know, getting ready for practice tomorrow. And naming him as the interim head coach when you've got a former head coach, you've got career assistants on yeah. the staff, he gives that kind of little youthful jersey vibe, energy, shot in the arm that this program needs. Right, and, that, and those words, jer you know, jersey guy, I think that's going to be part of the equation of who Pat Hobbs hires as the next coach. Uh, a lot of things that, that, that Hobbs said, I mean, was anything, one thing that stuck out to you and what, you know, what he was saying about why he made this decision and where he's going next? So, to be clear, we, we, I asked him about, the, about Graciano, it's the elephant yeah. in the room. I'm assuming you don't want to uh, talk about anyone who's obviously a current uh, coach, but Greg Schiano, there's been a lot of talk about him. W do you anticipate Greg Schiano being a, a, can a candidate for this job? Anyone who can help Rutgers football be competitive uh, and win conference championships is a candidate for this position. The phrase that we're going to hear for the next two months is anybody who can make Rutgers successful and put him in a position to win the Big Ten. Rose Bowl, he said. Rose Bowl. Anything you can share in that regard? I'm looking for the very best coach who will make Rutgers football competitive and compete for Big Ten championships. That's why I came here. I want to go to a Rose Bowl. All right, so I want a coach that I believe is capable of making us competitive on the field and competing ultimately for Big Ten conference championships. Look, you know, Pat Hobbs has done a ton of great things. You, you can really say that maybe he, he's the most influential figure of Rutgers athletics since Greg Shiano left. All the you know, buildings that they built, you know, the, what, the imprint that he's made. That being said, his legacy ultimately is going to be fine, uh, defined on whether or not he can uh, fix football. A lot of pressure over the next two months. Uh, still going to be questions on, on whether he's going to be able to make, uh, make the right hire. There's probably only be one more chance that he gets to make a football hire. Yeah, probably about it, yeah. And, and so there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of pressure on him. I think he handled himself well. Good, good first impression, but the next two months are going to be the ultimate litmus yeah. test. And I guess, I guess that's what's sort of jarring. I don't, I don't remember a coaching search that could be nine, ten weeks long. He said he wanted to hire the next coach at the end of November. Does that do you think that rules out Shiano? Is that is that a bad sign for people who are, who are on that? I mean, what what's your take on that? No, the way I took it was, you know, if if it's the end of November, then Shiano. I don't think he wants to hire. Like fans have been saying, well, they could hire Shiano tomorrow, and he right. could just go sit in the box and kind of observe everything. I don't think they're going to do that. I think he wants to let Nunzi you know, coach the eight games, yeah. get his interview at the end of the season, go from there. I think it's tough to do that. I mean, my guess is that if, if that's what you're going to do, my guess is it's, it's eight weeks of pre-planning, and then it's you have to have two or three people on your list, period, and you've got to ram those interviews through and get a deal done immediately before that kind of conference championship weekend. Right, and I, I just don't understand the, the waiting part from my perspective. is I, I think Nunzio is in a, a position to fail. I don't know how... You know, you, what, I mean, even if the team plays hard for him, we saw what happened in Michigan. The team's not good. I mean, it, you know, zero and eight for the rest of the way is on the table here. He's doing both jobs, coordinator, interim coach. It, it's a big ask. Do you think it's right to wait to the end of the season? The for one that? thing that I will say about that is there is a feeling within uh, from Rutgers insiders that, that maybe you can catch lightning in a bottle with mm -hmm. a guy who you know who you know 
historically speaking, has run an innovative uh, offense, albeit you know on the high school level. Lightning in a bottle means you know we'll see the next two months you know whether or not they can actually jumpstart the season. There's still you know eight games remaining. Um, as far as the, the, the timing, the one thing I will say to counter what Crash said is there's a possibility if you don't get Greg Ciano now that once the season ends, there's going to be some jobs out there. Boston College comes to mind. You know, you never, yeah, Virginia Tech. There's going to be, you know, so there's a feeling that, okay, if you want them, you better get them now. There, there is that feeling. And, and we've done the list. Not a lot of, not a lot of great candidates. I mean, I, I come back to this a lot. It, it, the list isn't very long. Yeah. You know? no, I was speaking to a, a prominent donor yesterday who said, Look at the list of candidates. Everybody's got a flaw. They've got a hang up. Everyone. There's they're not a there's no perfect candidate out there. Mm -hmm. And you don't think Rutgers is probably gonna be able to poach a perfect candidate from someplace else. So it's gonna be interesting to see where they kinda land. I will say this about Nunzio. Even if they catch lightning in a bottle, that five next games are manageable. Let's say they go three and two. You still gotta finish Penn State, Ohio yeah. State, Michigan State. That's I think gonna throw any kind of cold water on any run Nunzio develops. Hey, we've got two two months to talk about this, guys. Hooray. Steve Politi signing off, Keith Sargent, James Cratch. Listen to the podcast today. We'll have even more. Thanks.